Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, former president of the North American Menopause Society and a member of the Board of Trustees. And I'm thrilled to be here today talking about a new topic for our videos. Stephanie, please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Stephanie Fabian. I am at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I uh, direct the Executive and International Program, but my passion is women's health, and I direct the Office of Women's Health there. So, women's health. Let's talk about women who have breast cancer or who are at high risk for breast cancer and vaginal dryness. Is this worse for this particular subset of women? You know, women with breast cancer in particular um, have a little bit worse time of it when, when it comes to vaginal dryness. So we know that over half the women in the United States are going to experience some trouble with vaginal dryness, but it's even more significant in survivors of breast cancer. So yes, it's a huge problem, and the problem is that most of them are untreated. So let's talk about the concerns about treatment. Are these women eligible for hormone treatment, and if so, what kind of hormone treatment to specifically address the issue of vaginal dryness? Well, some of them may be, yes, and some of the considerations that providers may want to take into account when considering that would be the stage and the grade of the cancer they had, the hormone receptor status, whether there were lymph nodes positive, the time since the diagnosis, and uh, the response to previous treatments. So if a woman has responded to moisturizers and lubricants or not, and the impact on her quality of life. So it's a complicated decision, but at the end of the day, yes, there are some women that can still take hormone therapy, and in general, the more favorable candidates would probably be those with hormone receptor negative status, um, those with more remote disease, those with less invasive disease and better prognosis, and those who have already tried conservative measures and failed them, and the symptoms are having a big impact. So for the woman who has decided to try a vaginal treatment, talk to me about the options between estrogen and non-estrogen vaginal treatments. Mm -hmm. So in terms of estrogen treatments, we have all kinds of low-dose vaginal estrogens that can be delivered right to the vagina. So we have creams, rings, tablets, even a new gel cap. Um, there's also intravaginal DHEA, um, which is a newer hormonal but non-estrogen product. And so there's a lot we still don't know. We know from observational studies that vaginal estrogens are not associated with an increased risk of recurrence in breast cancer survivors even. Um, but you know these, these products uh, haven't been studied in randomized controlled trials in breast cancer survivors and they haven't been studied head to head. So we can't necessarily recommend one hormonal product over another. There's also ospemaphine, an oral selective estrogen receptor modulator um, again, it looks favorable in animal studies uh, for the breast, but it has not been studied in women with a history of breast cancer. So there are a lot of unknowns. And finally, if a woman wants to look at something that's prescription, that's not hormonal, is there anything? We know we talk about this for hot flashes, vasomotor sweats, but specifically when it comes to vaginal dryness? Well, uh, there's, there's lidocaine. Uh, so we have topical lidocaine, which is a prescription, but it's non-hormonal. But I have to add that it's not getting at the root of the problem, so it's not really affecting the cellular changes that uh, we know happen with lack of estrogen. It just covers up pain. So, so ultimately it becomes an individualized decision? Absolutely. And final word, are there some women that you think, no matter what, they really are not candidates for local, either vaginal or non-vaginal estrogen treatment, non-estrogen vaginal treatment? I I would say any woman is a candidate for a, a, a lubricant or moisturizer, even those that we ultimately decide to use an estrogen in, they can still use vaginal lubricants and moisturizers, and that's an important point, uh, that these things aren't mutually exclusive. But I, I don't think there's ever a, an absolute no, because this comes down to an individual decision between the woman and her provider, and I might add it's super important to involve the woman's oncologist in the decision-making process, too. Thank you so much. Thank you.